Ah, we just hear the music? Can we just hear that music? Yeah! That was really good uh, intro music. Yeah, yeah. Party! Yeah, it puts you in the mood. It puts you in the mood. It puts like, you in panel mood. That's like porn, like a background for a porn. <laughs> At least one I've seen. <laughs> I, mean, I know the one, too. <laughs> From so. what I've only listened to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of things we want to talk to you about. Uh, and of course, uh, as always, we brought clips of upcoming episodes. And we desperately want to hear your questions. And we'll invite you to come up uh, and ask them at the end of all this. There's. Uh, Something uh, you know so uh, incredibly gratifying about having these actors and being able to present them to you like this. Uh, they're you know I was thinking about this recently. They're they're really engaged. The actors uh, didn't just loan us their um, their mischievous spirit and their great voices. They also um, really come to work. I mean, they really uh, are uh, approach this with a great uh, attention, and we really uh, don't take that for granted. It's really, really nice. We're also in our now sixth season, which is which is. Woo! You know, they have a particular relationship to the show, the actors do. I've never left, and some of them have been shitty. <laughs> so you're wrong about that. <laughs> we can say we say. We would be sued, but you're right in spirit. Right. Right. You got. I guess you would. You're professionals. You wouldn't leave the session. Is what you're saying. And I don't know anything about Game of Thrones. I don't. You know the music. <laughs> I do. I know the theme song. <laughs> Years ago, John convinced me that the, the theme song had lyrics, and it was actually ba -ba 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 Game of Thrones. <laughs> And now I can't not hear it that much. I wish it was that. I would record that. And I would I would give my voice to the Game of Thrones. <laughs> they come back next season and there's the just say, oh, 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 Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the pleasure now, I think, is doing the show uh, better each time. You know, that, like I said, uh, getting that compliment, people say this episode or this season may be my favorite one yet, is it really means something coming from somebody who's watched all uh, of the seasons. And so I guess I, what I'd like to kick things off with, one by one, if you would, turn to, turn to your neighbor, Jim Dodry, start this up. We're, let's say we're going to go for broke and try to do this show as long as we possibly can. As long as you guys will watch this show. We will try to make each season the best. Jim, how do you think we're going to keep Larry happy, focused, and engaged for another six seasons? What's it going to take for Larry to just come to work the way he has this first six? Do you realize how old I am? <laughs> Six years, I'll be on Social Security. <laughs> uh, um, you don't have much time left. I, I would, uh, <laughs> anything, Should we do five seasons? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yes, maybe. That's what he's Should saying. we answer all these questions? No. Uh, there's any time Larry uh, Petty sings credits. Uh, things in the credits. I can't get enough of that. Yeah, that would, that would keep me going for quite a while. Yeah, who who caught the Natalie Merchant cover sung by Larry Murphy as Teddy? Uh, more, um, I think more Gene, Gene stories like they had like with the the outside toilet. That was a great episode. Yeah, I think we want to know more about Gene. He's yeah. a he's a goofy little character. Yeah, we want to learn about that rap scale, you know? <laughs> Without a doubt. Eugene, what do you think? Kristen Shaw, she comes to work every day. She is there to work, have fun. She's just the spark plug. What do you think it's going to take? I think for this? more and more episodes that show both uh, her mischievous side and also her warmth and heart. Oh. I think. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I think. <laughs> you, you've totally upset Kristen. <laughs> Fine, uh, if she, uh, uh, an episode where she kills a horse with her fists. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, 
just like, now to show my warm side. <laughs> she meant it. Um, yeah, I think I think more sto like more stories that are kind of that, that show both, which is really fun because she's so mischievous, but also uh, a very warm, warm character. I agree. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Super Kristen, what do you think? Own voice <laughs> terrified me. Um, I think Dan would probably want to continue recording over the seasons if he could do it from his home, um, from his house, with no people around him. And he would also like to have a Temple uh, Grandin hug machine and stuff. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? John Roberts comes to work every single time we record with incredible spirit. What's, what's it, what do we need to keep doing to keep John in hand? Well, I think it would make things more interesting for John if we, uh, if we killed off Linda and then Bob married Jocelyn. Did you say Bob marries Jocelyn? Yeah, so he could do his character. other voice. Yeah, his other character. I think that would be illegal, even in cartoons. You can cut. You can cut more in time. Thank you for the insight into your disturbing mind, Dan <laughs> John Roberts, what, are we, what should we do for John Benjamin? I Keep think him we happy. Set up a uh, a recording studio in a uh, like a really gay piano bar in the West Village. Like and the one you took me to? Yeah, like the one that, the one that we go to every uh, Like Marie's Crisis or something? We went once. Yeah, we went once. sing our gay hearts out. Uh, yeah, something, maybe something musical. Yeah, he loves to sing this one. He I do. He does. he does. He's good at it. I get you. Then. Yeah, you get me. I didn't plan that. Yeah. Or do we, do we have to? No. I. I think it would require for you more money <laughs> to do another season. I think you would have to demand more money. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot more. Yeah. Right. Now you say it. At least like a thousand dollars more. <laughs> I, like, I like where you're going with that. Now I'm a pretty tough negotiator. <laughs> Yeah? All right. Uh, we brought clips. You want to see them? Good. All right. I mean, I'm trying to decide whether I should set these all up before you see them. One's an animatic. Do you know what that means? It means yeah. we didn't color it in. You guys don't mean that. We're not going to pander to you with color <laughs> and full lip sync and animation. People are running. It's probably fine. Uh, the, uh, the first one, uh, who remembers the Capoeira episode? <laughs> In what some say may be the longest uh, number of episodes between a character occurring and then reoccurring, we are now finally bringing Gyro back. <laughs> the, the clip that you'll see first is an animatic in which uh, you'll discover just how Bob and Gyro uh, come into each other's lives. Uh, after that, well, I'll tell you what, let's watch the clip and then uh, pause it, if you will, after that tech, and I'll uh, introduce the next clip. Let me finally release the Bob's Burgers album. <laughs> we have a date, September 25th, iTunes. September 27th, the premiere September 25th, go on iTunes, buy like six or seven copies each of you, please. Uh, we also have a cookbook coming out. All of those burgers are essentially inedible. <laughs> They're jokes designed to make you laugh, and yet, there's a kid out there who attempted the impossible. His name is Cole Bowden. He started this thing called the Bob's Burgers Experiment. This poor schmuck makes each one of these burgers as best he tries to make it taste like it was intended to be a real burger and not just a pun or a joke. Uh, and it's incredible because he has succeeded in probably like six out of ten times. 
the uh, people have followed his blog, and we uh, quietly started just peeking in at it uh, now and again. And so then, when the uh, possibility of, a, of doing a real cookbook came up, it seemed uh, like a natural to let this guy, who's really, truly, for three years, been making every single burger of the day, to to honor his recipes by putting them in a book. And of course, we'll, uh, you know, accept feedback. If any of them are good, we really want to hear about it, because we're not expecting <laughs> any of them necessarily to be the best burger you ever had, but we want you to try. Uh, child burger. <laughs> I want to talk about the child molester burger. Can I say, that joke, I, it is so funny now to meet 10-year-olds, uh, 7-year-olds, 5-year-olds who watch the show, some of them whom uh, belong to me, and I, it's so funny to, to revisit that pilot and be like, wow, that joke is really not a <laughs> I was a parent at preschool the other day, and they said, oh, Lauren, come here. I want to tell you a funny story. And they said, uh, our son was outside on the back deck last night about 5 o'clock, loud enough for all the neighbors. He was singing, I'm good at sex. You're bad at sex. I'm good at sex. You're bad at sex. I'm good at sex. And they said, what are you singing? What are you singing? And he said, it's from Paul's Burgers. <laughs> I got I to gotta, I gotta face these people every day at preschool. Uh, we, um, I'm, I want to tell you something about the giveaway. It's happening. Every single one of you gets something. For walking through those doors, you receive a gift. I don't have uh, Can you hold up what we got? Yeah, there you go. These kick-ass bags. Uh, so, somehow, magically, some of you have them already, but, but many of you don't. Is that true? Anyway, I've been told, do not rush the front. Is that right? Am I phrasing that correctly? Oh, no, I was told, rush the front. <laughs> Swing your arms. Just have fun. Get that back. Line up at the microphone, if you will. We want to hear your questions. We, oh, look at you. Oh, you're crouched down like, a, like a soldiers. You are hiding in the bush. Uh, Are you guys yeah. having fun? Yeah. I just want to make sure. Thanks. <laughs> this one goes out to Christian Shaw. Asks Louise, what is your favorite insult? For me, it's her breath smells like sweat. Maybe his mustache is 17, but he's 90. And my personal favorite. If she was a spice, she'd be flour. <laughs> I think I'll go with your choices. <laughs> yeah, those are good. Yeah. What's your question? Um, hi, my name is Alec, and I was just wondering when you guys like were casting, were uh, Linda and Tina originally going to be guys, or at first was it going to be like girls? Um, Linda and Tina, you want to take this one? Oh, uh, John was originally going to be a woman. In um, real life. <laughs> but, um, as uh, Lauren hired him off his amazing YouTube videos where he yeah. plays his mom. That's right. Not many people applauded. <laughs> John, thank you. It is what it is. Thank you. It Still is what it is. Too bad about John Benjamin has a van that got canceled. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Well, I can definitely go on YouTube anytime I want. That's so. right. That's right. Not so much uh, Comedy Central. Huh? It's, it's tough to get on YouTube. Anyway. <laughs> Dan was originally Daniel, and then they were like, let's give him lady parts. I think that's how Fox phrased it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, yeah, they didn't uh, suggest that he become a girl. They simply suggested that maybe the older boy character, what could we do to make him pop more? And we said, oh, we know the answer to that. Make <laughs> <laughs> <It's> a girl. <laughs> Dan's voice coming out of his face. Out of her face. How did they react to that? Were Great. They... We said that we, we did a test. We created uh, Nora Smith uh, very quickly, uh, 
created the design of Tina, and we put Dan Mintz's lines from the pilot, including my crotch as a chief, or I think I believe at that time was my balls for a chief, and uh, also some of his stand-up. We put it coming out of, of Tina's mouth, and it was obvious that it was going to work. So Dan had to come all the way back in to say crotch? Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. It was one That's of our awesome. early pickups. Thank you for that question. Awesome. Good question. We got a Louise. Hi. Um, so now we finally have an album coming out. Does anybody have like a particularly favorite song they want to be on it? I think um, yeah. lifting up the skirt of the night. Yeah. John, you do it. Yeah. yeah. What about the? You turn some beer in the beer. Yeah. Wonder what, what was wonder. In the snake song? Okay. Yeah, the I'm snake not song. afraid of cancer. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not afraid of cancer. cancer. I'm not afraid of sharks? Sharks? Sharks and cancer. True. True. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not afraid of sharks. I'm just afraid of snakes. Where are they? Thank you for that What's question. What's that Thanksgiving sauce? What's the Thanksgiving sauce? Um, pass the cranberry sauce. Got mashed potatoes. Oh, turkey looks great. Thank you for being there. Thank you for loving me. Hi. <laughs> so, next year is an election year. There's all this competition. <laughs> the guy behind you. Right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> with all these families vying for power, that guy's definitely going to go to work. What would the world look like if the Belchers were in charge? It would be chaos. It would be a lot gayer. <laughs> it would be fun but chaotic. Bernie Sanders? Sorry. I feel, I feel like the Belcher family might pay more attention to the middle class and try to create a middle class for once in this country. I think they would probably take money from the 1% and just tax the heck out of them. And they would stop um, have making corporations people. Okay, this isn't the, uh, wow. the John Stewart panel. Okay. She's, she's drunk. She's drunk. All they would, all over 15 minutes. And they would give the army um, nub trucks. Chris Kringle. Uh, next question. Um, Mr. Sanders? What? <laughs> there he is. Somebody's got weed on them. Yeah. <laughs> that ukulele is filled with a ukulele. Sativa, man. You, you found me that. Um, the, um, this cast is brilliant. I, I love everything that everybody here does, and I can't imagine how it would be possible to come up with somebody who could match them for Mr. Fishoder, but. You did with Kevin Klein. Yeah. How did he come into the picture? He came in through, I believe, a connection to Eugene. Is that correct? I, I think he was a fan of home movies, and then I had met him through Michael Showalter because he came to a show. And I think he was a fan of, yeah, home movies, and, and his kids were fans of that and like Wet Hot American Summer and all that stuff. And, and I think it's, our casting person uh, was was chummy with his management, I believe. Yeah. And so it, it, the circle was made, and incredibly, he's part of that show. Look at that ukulele! I can't take my eyes off it. Yeah. <laughs>
you stoned later. I'll get you stoned. <laughs> Play the theme song. Find something. Play Give it to us. us. Give it to us. Play it. That's what you said left? No. Oh. Yeah. Is that your dad? <laughs> oh, stop, stop. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Look at this. She wants some burgers and fries. She wants some burgers and fries. Wow. Look at that. Look at this. Um, yeah. oh. What's the name of the town? Oh, God. We've what made it so that? far. <laughs> <laughs> That's I funny. I believe it's Leningrad, no? <laughs> <laughs> Leningrad, New Jersey. We, uh, we have a fantastic um, editor, and when you uh, go to an edit room, sometimes it's called a bay. I think it's left over from when the, there was more equipment in there. Um, so when, often when we're working, we talk about going back to Seymour's Bay, uh, because it is uh, where our avid editor works. Um, but it's become our privately known fact that maybe the town should be called Seymour's Bay because it has a nice ring to it. Uh, so that's the answer to the question. We didn't want to do the Simpsons uh, thing of like being mysterious about it because they do that very well already. Uh, but we did kind of... Um, I don't know, tuck that away, but the end, you dressed up so nicely, so you deserve to have your question answered. Seymour's Bay. What is that up there? That's from the uh, end credit sequence from the Burgers and Fries episode, the, uh, when oh, okay. Gene uh, loses his mojo. And uh, we worked really hard on those designs. Annalise, are you here? It's nice to see that thing come to life. You don't know how many times we recolored your costume before you made it. <laughs> What's your question? Hi, um, I wanted to ask, I know like he said about Kevin Klein. I love some of the, the guest voices that you have, like Bill Hader and Aziz. Um, and I know that Christian and Gene are, are both from the Flight of Concords world, but there might be a possibility that maybe Brett or Jermaine might... <laughs> Can you tell us about maybe some some people that might be coming on the show soon? Your new voices. Can we take this one? Uh, Henry Winkler will will be on the show. Steve Buscemi. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Could we get um, Jermaine or Brett to be on the show? Yes. Yeah, so who's the guy? Who, uh, who's the guy who plays their manager? Starving. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's around. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's actually, I mean, not to make it weird, but he's under this table. Just uh, <laughs> eating ice cream. Jermaine very nicely say, came and sang uh, Electric Love with us in New York at the Bob's Live event. Anybody there? Oh, yeah. Nobody there. Oh, yeah, Jermaine came and sang. Oh, yeah. What song was Electric Love? It's Electric Love. Electric Love. Yeah. yeah. That was nice. He's a good falsetto. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He has a great <laughs> voice, strong smile. Stars, uh, this season we, we uh, you know, we've had Key and Peele separately, but never together. Finally, we will hear their voices together. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, Colin and Ben Garant separately, but now we brought that great duo together. Yeah. We'll hear them together in, a, in an episode where the Bob has to sell Critter's bike for a Critter to get him out of jail. Uh, and we have uh, Wanda Sykes uh, plays a uh, furniture saleswoman uh, that Linda idolizes. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Uh, there's a, in the spring you'll see an episode where Tina rides a horse for the first time. And uh, you'll also meet um, gonna die. a very stupid. important part of her inner life, which is her imaginary horse, Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that will be voiced by Paul Rudd. <laughs> What's your question? Um, we know Jean is really good at tablescaping. I wanted to know what the other characters, secret talents are, or what they want them to be? Mm. Erotic friend fiction. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. What is talents? Any talent you would want to have. Ooh. Does anyone have a ping pong ball? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> She's very good at ping pong. 
Because you want to be good at ping-pong, She's going to ping, yeah, she wants to be like the Forrest Gump, like the champion. Yeah, not the other thing that you, where you were going with that. Like Tijuana. Right, no. Tijuana ping-pong. Does anybody want basketball? No, But Tina's very good at Tai Chi. <laughs> Teddy's very good at karaoke. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, maybe Louise is a math genius. She just hasn't taken math class yet. Beautiful mind. <laughs> yeah, beautiful mind. Beautiful mind. Yeah. yeah, but less voices in the head. Maybe Louise can pick up foreign languages really quick. Or... <laughs> right, we're just making this up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're, guys, you're writing future episodes. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good Thank question. you. Uh, nice costume, by the way. That's from the Ice Pushing episode, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen Linda? She's Linda. here. Linda from Ice Pushing is here somewhere. Find each other. It's important. Yes, before you leave, look around and find a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> It'll change your life. <laughs> She's leaving. <laughs> she walked right out the door. Hi, what's your question? Uh, my question is for Kristen. First of all, I want to say thank you. We once met under funny circumstances, and now I have a Kristen Shaw story. Uh, <laughs> what happens? Yeah. <laughs> this is this? Uh, uh, I was drugs. walking my dog in my neighborhood during Sketchfest in San Francisco, and you were having dinner, and I didn't want to disturb you during dinner, so I waved oh, through the window. I remember you yeah. through the window. Are you gender fluid? Uh, <laughs> It's actually not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, it's just, I, I don't know, it came. I think maybe Tina might be an easier girl to play than some women would be, just because um, she doesn't really hide what she wants. She just like has very clear desires. <laughs> so I don't really think about what the gender I am, I just talk. <laughs> In real life, Dan is basically about butts and horses, too. <laughs> They're so similar. <laughs> Thank you. Tell, oh, Lexi has fun again. Hi, we got a Tina, what's your question? Camp is horrible. <laughs> take, take, him out of that, take him out of that camp. <laughs> get him, the get him home. <laughs> That's not as possible. Oh, P.S. What's it like to play girl? What? P.S. What's it like to play girl? <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is for Dan, and I was wondering what kind of advice would Tina give to those girls who feel they can't get a boyfriend or they feel single and they just. Not you. Not you. <laughs> right? Yeah. A friend. <laughs> it was just sitting there. I... It's fine. I, I would say um, for Tina, being persistent has worked pretty well. <laughs> Might not work as well in real life, though. Stalk them. Stalk them. <laughs> Focus and self-reliance. It's the only way to go. But just, um, if you're an awkward person like Tina, or like me, um, <laughs> just, like, um, try to um, uh, pretend like not awkward. <laughs> <laughs> a minutes until it gets the ball rolling and you're actually not awkward. Right. <laughs> Pretend a couple minutes a day and then keep growing from there. <laughs> Two minutes one day, four minutes the next, and then all of a sudden you're amazing. You got three minutes under your belt. <laughs> Grab life by the butt. That's all you need. Oh, we have a Jean. How about you? What's your question? Um, or it's just the yellow shirt? <laughs> My question is for Kristen. I wanted to know what do you do to get into character when you do Louise? Well, um, I do 25 push-ups, and <laughs> then I <laughs> then I drink um, ginger. No, uh, usually um, she's just really accessible. She's basically me, so I don't do much and the lines really provide all of it, but um, yeah, I just sort of um, just say a little prayer and uh, close my eyes and, and go to work. Alright, we got bad news. 
It's oh. a really big, really just very impressive looking uh, text right here that says last question and that's no! for you. That's you, Tina. That's you, Tina. Okay. All right. So this is for Eugene, Kristen, and Dan. Considering there's such a drastic age difference between you and the characters you play, um, is there one characteristic that you think you have in common with them? Well, I'm basically an 11 year old boy. <laughs> with just more organizational skills now. <laughs> not much more. Not, but not much more. Not like, a, like I wouldn't brag about it unless I was directly asked. <laughs> um, I don't know, I think for me, like as Kristen just said, uh, I think we were all sort of cast and we're partially channeling ourselves, so, and we're all comedians and a little silly and a little childlike. Uh, but uh, not threatening and uh, warm. Uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah, I think we're just kid-like. I would say um, my my similarity with Louise is Louise really adores her family and her brothers and sisters, and I definitely adore this cast too. Sorry to be so saccharine. That's a nice way to go out. Thank you so much for coming.